there are three really interesting themes that are starting to emerge and uh, which will probably change the course of liver disease forever. The first is a better understanding of why the liver fails. And within that, there's a whole complex of studies here at this meeting, which starts to talk about the interaction of the microbiome, bacterial translocation, sensitization of organs, and more importantly, how that leads on to liver failure. So gut becomes a target of therapy, the circulation becomes a target of therapy, and of course, the liver itself becomes a target of therapy. So there are a few things here at this meeting that are really exciting. So there is a paper from Dr. Bajaj who talks about fecal transplantation, and he shows that it's possible to do it, it could possibly improve outcomes. There's a whole host of issues in relation to trying to better understand how the toll-like receptor system interacts with liver disease. And there's a really nice paper which was presented by Dr. Sheikh, which is actually from my lab, which shows that targeting the TLR4 system may be a therapeutic for liver failure. So gut-liver interaction is one of the themes that is really, really exciting. The second really exciting story that emerged from a recent paper that was published in The Lancet from Dr. Karacheni and Professor Bernardi's groups that long-term albumin infusion is likely to prevent further decompensation from cirrhosis has been highlighted in many uh, papers that has been presented in this meeting. And more importantly, there have been debates as to whether long-term infusions are good. There's been a symposium. And so that is now going to be a big area of research in terms of what help happens to albumin biology, whether it is indeed a target for therapy, who should we treat with long-term infusions, and what the effects might be. So albumin is the second big domain, which is, I think, really, really exciting. The third area is really close to my heart, which is a syndrome that uh, we at Easel and Cliff Consortium and UCL helped define over the course of these last 20 years a syndrome called acute on chronic liver failure, which is really a, it is a terrible, terrible condition where somebody who's apparently healthy couldn't go from being completely well to dead in 30 days. And there are consortia which have been developed in Asia, in Europe, and in China, in the US, who are all studying this syndrome. And it's interesting, there's a large study from China which validates a lot of the hypotheses that were built in studies out of the Cliff Consortium here in Europe. A massive study showing that acute and chronic liver failure occurs even in hepatitis B patients, and the characteristics are not very different to patients with uh, patients that were described with mainly alcoholic liver disease in Europe. And it's very similar to what's seen in Europe. Now, what this creates is a framework for risk stratification and for the first time starts to develop the story around how to treat this dreadful condition. And in that, to, towards that end, there are two or three things that are happening in that field at the moment, which has been highlighted here. There's a whole role of liver transplantation, which has been discussed and we think there is some rationale. There's a nice talk by uh, uh, Dr. Kamath at the postgraduate course, which, which review this whole literature area suggesting that patients with acute and chronic liver perhaps need to have priority for transplantation. But more importantly, now there's a milieu of different industry that have become interested in this syndrome. And there's a really nice study from Dr. Maven's group from uh, Belgium who shows very nicely that even infusion of hepatic stem cells may be a therapeutic in this area and it presents very nice safety data in this area. So this has been an incredible meeting from, for the cirrhosis experts, and it's opened up three really important uh, research areas, which I think will grow and grow and grow in the next five to 10 years.